very much for everybody uh, coming to uh, tonight, giving up your time. Um, and the first thing I want to do is also thank uh, the Department of Education in Nevada, and particularly Dr. Gabriel Rubio, for donating the use of uh, this Adobe Connect for this webinar. Um, can I please ask everybody to actually write in the chat uh, the institution and the country where you actually come from, please, so we can see who's uh, been kind enough to join us. Um, while you're doing that, I'll just mention, well, I'm Joel Josephson. You can't actually see my name here. I'm from the Kinder site in the UK. And my role in this project is primarily dissemination. Uh, but I'd also like you to uh, know who I was presenting with me. And Helena, would you be kind enough to tell us all about you? <laughs> so I am in Sweden speaking, and my name is Helena Erstrand. And I have over the years become a um, dance enthusiast. I started a little dance school, free time activities for children, for small children, 1989. And 1995, we did our first international European project. And now it has passed so many years, so we are international in many ways, and all those small children that started 89, some of them are professional dancers around the world. And this dance school, Vikshefors Balletten, is part of Artined, and we will present our piloting tonight. So I pass over to Matilda. Okay, thank you, Helena. So hello, everybody. I'm Matilda, uh, and I have been previously working for Vikhofors Balletten and with Helena, and still are doing collaborations with them. And I was the dance teacher, dance teacher in Sweden for the piloting here. And uh, currently I'm studying uh, to become um, a teacher for secondary education on the subject dance at Luleå University of Technology. Yeah, that's me. So over to you, Joel, again. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Matilda and Helena. OK, I've got to talk now, haven't I? Right, um, so what's art in ed? I'm not going to talk a lot about um, the project because we have presented a couple of times before. Uh, basically, it's a very innovative project, which I feel is very much needed, about how we use the arts and through the arts build creativity into all primary school subjects. And the reason for this, I, uh, I believe, is that in today's society and the future careers and society that we're going to be living in, creativity is an absolutely, totally necessary aspect or will be, is, is an aspect of our lives because we're living in such a dynamic, uh, changing society. Technology is making so many differences to the way and the way we think and the way we work that we need people to be creative, to adapt and to work in this new world. And that's basically the bottom line of what our project is about. Now, just to make this real, here's a picture from Adela's school, who's actually one of the participants today. And you can actually see Adela in the corner on the far left side, holding the boy with a red jacket. That's Adela. <laughs> I don't know if she wants me to tell you about that. But they actually did uh, on drawing and uh, visual arts in this project. Uh, which we're not going to look at in depth today. Um, now, why? Uh, in a sense, I've given a little bit of background, but within the context of this project, what we're trying to do is uh, continue. Children are born creative, and the school very much pushes this out of them uh, through the idea of everything they have to do in school has to be correct. Where, of course, the arts are much more fluid and it's, we learn from our experiences and our failures as well. So what we're trying to do here is to continue to allow children to be creative, to express themselves without risk of failure, and still learn. Um, and of course, the arts build these sort of transversal competences. They're very engaging and fun. Arts allow children of with very many different 
ways of learning and ideas and intellects to achieve together. You know, that there's some people are good at this, some people are good at that, and of course the arts very much are in that area. So, you know, all the different types of learners can be catered for within the arts. Um, we found, uh, and studies have found, that uh, the arts increase concentration and give all these other areas, uh, co cooperation, uh, self-esteem, and better results. And of course, we know that doing the arts, children love doing art of every description and all the different ways that we included in the projects, and it helps them want to learn, which is something that's very important, of course. Now, what have we done? Basically, through the project, we've discovered that using the arts creates a very nice learning environment. And also, it makes an, a nice informality in the learning environment, because the students are not just sitting listening. They're involved in their learning. They're involved, as we'll see with the dance, it's very much about a kinesthetic learning, where movement and the emotional content of, uh, of movement and the arts become part of their learning, which increases their ability to retain and reflect on what they've done. Uh, within the project, we looked at four areas, which are the verbal arts, which is creative writing, we say literary arts here, um, the visual arts, which allows visual and spatial learning, uh, musical, we use music uh, as a tool of learning, and body kinesthetic, I can't say that word, which is very much what Matilda and Helena have been involved in, and we're going to show here, which is about using dance and drama. Um, of course, teachers also gain by just, just being involved in this process and watching how the collaboration works, how the creativity works, and the enthusiasm that the children bring. And one of the main aims of this project is to sort of to cross that over into other streams. You know, the project is limited in what we can do and what we've done, but we very much try to look at how that can be used in other spheres of learning. And in a sense, this is just a kick start, just a way of starting the idea of using the arts is a real tool. And hopefully the resources we're going to show at the end uh, will give you some ideas and boosts in that area as well. <clears throat> now, I just mentioned about what we've made, and we're going to look at this in depth uh, at the end. But we have built a, a methodology. We have in-service teacher training courses we've run. And we're hoping to rerun them again in the future. So. If you sort of get involved uh, through the website, um, through the Get Involved uh, form, we'll be able to send you information about that if we do that in the future. And we've made sample courses for primary schools, and those have all been described in the resources. And we'll look at that, as I say, at the end. Now, I think you've all had quite enough of me talking. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I had I need a drink. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to uh, Helena. Helena, yes, Helena's next uh, to talk about what they actually did in that school. So Helena, off to you. Thank you. So in this EU project, Art in Ed, we have been focusing on uh, various subjects, but in Sweden we have used dance to reach out to schools. So we had three pilot schools in Sweden where we uh, presented uh, cross-curricular subjects like we had environmental education in the class and then we sent out our two dance teachers to, to meet the students in the dance studio. And Matilda is one of the dance teachers from Viksjö Forsballet, and so she will tell about this process, how to dance a subject in school. So Matilda, I pass over to you. Okay, thank you, Helena. Uh, I hope everybody hear me okay. So 
what we actually did, me and one more uh, dance teacher uh, in the school, was to uh, start. Uh, I didn't hear now, but we were in three classes. First of all, I want to say, to say there was one younger class. They were about seven years old, and there was the two bigger class. They were around 11 year, years old. So we're two dance teachers working with three different three different classes. And what we began to do was to sit down and to talk with the teachers uh, on actually how we would put up the lessons and how we would collaborate. And uh, uh, what we then did was to make the introduction to the kids, to the students, to tell them what was going on and what we would, what we would be doing. And the focus in Sweden was on the, on the water and the soil. So uh, each class we would have, it would start inside of the classroom, 15 minutes in the class. And in the class, we would, uh, uh, the teacher would hold a, like an introduction of what we later would uh, continue with in the dance studio. So they would talk, for example, about the layers of soil one lesson and another lesson about the water maybe when in a different states when it's uh, fluid, when it's frozen, etc. And uh, after being around 15 minutes in the classroom, we would walk over to the dance studio. But if you don't have a dance studio in your school, it could be a gymnastic hall and it could be also in the classroom if you just move the tables. So uh, when we went to the dance studio. It looked a bit different uh, according to the class. So with the younger ones, we worked a lot on improvisation and their own creativity, like they could explore what they actually learned in the classroom. So they explored in another dimension in the body. And from that, finally, we did a, a choreography. They made the choreography. So they created something uh, through the learning. And with the older kids, we did it a bit different. Uh, we started with uh, to teach them a choreography that me and Julia Erstan, who was my uh, fellow dance teacher, we created a choreography, and with them, we we did the um, we learned out the choreography. And and but for us, it was also important here for the older kids to make their statement to to use their credit. Activity. So they would also be able to, to feel that they achieved something and did something within the, the, the lesson. So, uh, and the final thing was that we had a, a performance with the kids from the three classes. So what we're going to see now is actually a small uh, video, edited video, with some of the, the parts of the final performance. So Joel uh, the video. Are you with me? I'm not sure now. <laughs> Joel? Yep, okay. Let's bring it in. <laughs> okay, bring it yep, in, I'm and there. now, so here you see the small, the small class. So we will look now at the final result from Sweden. Um, I'm having bandwidth problems here. I think. Uh, um. Is the video working for you? Now it's working. Okay. Okay, good. It's a bit also slow for me, I think. So as you see, we work a bit with the umbrella, so you can see that they only not dance themselves, they use umbrellas also. And this is the choreography they created themselves.
I told you, you're going to have to tell me when the video ends because it's not working at my end. So you just tell me when to get it out. Yeah, there's some connection problems. It's stopping, and but I will tell you when it's ending. So I don't know how it's actually working because it's stopping. Okay. No, this is not working either. Sorry. Maybe we should pause, Joel. Okay, uh, how far have we got, Matilda? How far have we got into the video, please? You know, we're mixed up, I think. Yeah, do you hear me? We could oh. see... Uh, yeah, there's a huge we... connection problem. We, we should stop, uh, stop the video and maybe continue uh, with the webinar. I'm very sorry, guys. Uh, okay. You can all see Thank the videos you. in okay. the... Uh, Let's on continue. the Artenet page. over to you, please. Yeah. Yeah. So did everybody hear what I said now? I said sorry for the problems and that uh, if you like to see the videos, you can also see them uh, in the, um, on the Artenet page on YouTube. So, so I will continue. So I wanted to now try to give you some ideas for, uh, for your actual work in your school. And uh, for us, we work with the environmental subject, but arts and dance now, for example, is possible to put in any kind of subject. So, for example, if you are a foreign or native language teacher, you could easily uh, use dance as dancing a book or a song by putting, like they show the words in the book or the song by using their body. That's one way of, of doing it. And that gives like, give them another dimension of understanding what they're reading or what they are singing uh, and helping them to, to learn it better, to remember it longer. For example, in science, like here with the environmental, uh, you can uh, connect the structure of the earth uh, by doing it in dance. So like to split the parts up and let them use their imagination to create dances or maybe even theater stories. Uh, to explain it. And for uh, geography, I have uh, one thing is to actually let them work as a group and create the world map by, uh, through their bodies. So they could uh, lay down on the floor and they could try to create the map, the world map, if they've seen it on a picture and then they could show it with their bodies. Uh, also, you can dance, let them dance at mountains or lakes or cities that they can, can more explain it further how how the structure of the earth works. Uh, and also, you could make a culture dance travel through the world to bring culture awareness that dances don't look the same all, all around the world. And for mathematics, uh, these, these two, uh, like dance, to use dance in mathematics is even proven to work very fine. Uh, to make figures with the bodies, to actually uh, use the terms of mathematics mathematics into to showing in the body like the division, multipl multiplication, plus and minus to actually show it in the body. So actually it's only the imagination that stops on how you can use art in your own subject. And if you have dance in your class, uh, warming up is very good. So you just, it's about wor warming up the body to make them more aware of their body, to just not have them uh, getting injured or anything, just to be ready for dancing. And, and it should also start their creativity. So for example, there's one uh, thing called Dance Up, and that's only for having fun and getting warm. You put on a music, the children run around, and whenever uh, you stop the music, they have to freeze. And then you have Dance Hunt, which is for them to start the creativity, and it's also, everybody runs around and there's a hunter. And when the hunter takes someone, he has to give a movement to the other child, the student. 
and then they have to copy each other and then it turns out to be a lot of movements going around in the room. So this is about the creativity. And then we also have dance theater who is for the imagination where you actually give the children a, a simple um, idea, like a sentence, now you should walk on the moon. And they're walking on the moon, but not by saying that they are now walking on the moon, but they're showing it in their body. So this is really simple things that you can use for warming up and to get them started. Uh, and then this is a very important thing, the improvisation, which we use a lot in Sweden. And improvisation is to, to let the children uh, create and to, to, um, to use their imagination, to, to explore their imagination and get a higher learning of the actual subject. Because if they feel that they are creating it, they are actually creating what they are learning. So it, it gets like a motivator because they see it, uh, that I'm doing this, I'm creating what we are learning. So you help them with small guidance, with small inspiration and in impressions, and then they can continue to explore. And that, that is impossible, that's impo I mean possible in every kind of subject. Uh, and important here is to say that there's actually no uh, right or wrong, that you let the children explore freely, that only their imagination is the limit. What can be the next step in using dance in, uh, in school is to actually let them uh, do a choreography. And you can do that in three different ways. It's either uh, the one that you actually create a choreography on the subject you're teaching and they are, you're learning them. Or that you split them into groups, for example, with environmental, you split them into a sun group, a water group, a soil group, and they can create their own choreography or to combine those two, uh, so, you, so you use both ways. So they, it's possible in, in which way you feel most comfortable. And the last thing I want to address is the visibility. So what you, um, visibility is actually a chance for the children to show other people what they learned. And in art, often you create something. If you paint a picture, it becomes a picture that you show to someone. Or if you make a song or learning a song, it finally ends up with you knowing a whole song. Or with a dance, you finally have learned maybe a choreography. And when you can show this product, this thing you, you learned, it gives, gives you self-confidence because you can, you can uh, very uh, visible, visible uh, show what you learned. So um, this is a very good thing to use, I think, when you're using arts in, in the subject. And, um, and, and it's important that it never is a have to, it's a, something that is um, free, like you have, the children can choose if they like to do it or not. In case there is a sh a children that are shy for it, maybe they get encouraged by seeing the others doing it, or they, or they just don't do it. it. It's just up to them, I think it's important to say. Um, yeah, so that, I hope this gave you something to use in your own school. Uh, here you see a bit of pictures, it's from Romania, uh, where they did the arts and the creative writing in Italy, and the dance in Sweden, and here you have the music where they also move and dance uh, in UK. So I leave over to you, Joel. Okay, thank you, thank very, you very much. That was, that was, that was really good. Very, very nice presentation. Thank you. I, I enjoyed listening to that because uh, I didn't know every detail, so it was very illuminating. So yeah. as, as Matilda <laughs> <didn't> said, <laughs> and uh, you did extremely well. I saw you did a very good job. Um, Thank you. Now, obviously, one of the reasons we we do these webinars and we very much like presenting what we do is to try to offer to teachers all over Europe the opportunity to actually use the resources that we've made. And we've actually put these uh, onto our website on the internet. And I'll, I'll show you uh, right now ha how you can actually uh, go to those websites and take down all the information that we've got. But also, I want to show you the wiki space that we've made. And the wiki space is very much about sharing what we do. Um, with the wiki space, what you can do is put up 
the images and videos and, or text of the work that your children have done using the resources of the project. So let's have a little quick look. We're not actually going to be able to go to the website because there's one or two bandwidth uh, issues here. So what I'm going to do is just show you some screenshots. Um, and if you could, um, Helena, Matilda, or Adela, or uh, Chinzia, pop in the into the chat the uh, links to the website and the webinar and the wiki, please. Uh, so let's just have a quick look. This is the resources page of the um, website. And you'll see that we've got some background materials on the project. Uh, environmental lesson plans, that's what we're showing on the right side. And you can see the environmental lesson plans show the different areas of the uh, environment that we actually looked at and how we address them through each of the different art forms. So there's uh, five different art, four, four different art forms and five different lesson plans for the five different aspects of um, that we actually worked on. Uh, we also have some use case scenarios, which very much look at how you could use these ideas in other areas of the, uh, of the curriculum, and some best practices of the work that we did and how they were actually used. And we actually do also have a repository of uh, academic papers and best practices and websites and all sorts of various areas um, showing uh, how the arts can be used in education. Because what we did wasn't just stand alone. We also looked at what had been done previously and in other instances and other ideas as well to enrich our project. Um, finally, we'll look at the wiki. And what we ask here is if you're interested in um, using the resources of the project, you can write to us through the Get Involved form, which is on the website, and ask for a page to be made for your school. And that comes to me, and I will send you back and make a page for you on the school. You On the bottom left-hand side, you can see school pages there already. And we make a link for you, and I send you the link. You then have to register on the uh, wiki space with a real name, please, so we know who it is. And uh, then you can actually upload yourself, and there's instructions how to do that if you have a problem, your, the, the work that your children are doing. So we try to cover every aspect and help everybody in every way. Of course, you can write to us if you need help, and we're very happy to help you as well. Um, at this point, I think we uh, there's some links there. Um, we're ready for questions. Uh, hopefully, we've got some questions there. And the last thing, if I remember to do, is to give you a, something to take away with you as well. But if you've got any questions, please can you type into the chat. Um, and I see straight away, Sylvia, you were ready. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can I adapt for homeschooling bilinguals and collaborating with my local dance teacher for ELT? I think that's a really, really good question. I think you're halfway to solving it. So, Matilda or Helena, would you like to answer this? I don't know the Matilda? question for Helena. Homeschooling. Okay. Yeah. If you know it, you can go whatever, whatever school it is. Uh, if you can connect a dance school where there is a dance teacher, of course it helps. But many teachers don't have a dance teacher around, so so you have to try to do the crea creative parts of the lesson yourself. I am not a dance teacher, so I I just copy things <laughs> I see, and when I am a teacher with children, and and. Uh, and what mm -hmm. if I could say something also? Uh, uh, that's the thing that you maybe feel it's hard when you're not a dance teacher yourself and you're afraid that you can't do it yourself and you have to bring uh, someone from the outside and 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 this is what we we think it's possible without bringing someone from the uh, from the outside maybe you can uh, get help from to start with it to get ideas and to get 
uh, tools for working with it, but uh, mostly I think it's about trying out and 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 uh, feeling the the courage to do it, and also to to push your um, the head of the school to actually uh, get some learning experience from dance teachers that they can help you and provide it with it. Um, so you can feel more sure of using arts in your education. That would be my answer. Can, can I just actually say something here? Um, uh, we're picking up somebody's voice on a telephone. Please, can you turn your microphone off? Um, uh, homeschooling means they're actually teaching their children in the home. Uh, uh, that's what I presume Sylvia means. Um, I think really what you're talking about here is uh, it's a very interesting aspect of uh, education, homeschooling. And um, I think w w what you could do here, what would be very interesting, is sort of to turn around to the dance teacher and uh, you say about English. So in a sense, I think, you know, music for language teaching, I think music and using song is perhaps a little bit, uh, and dance, you can use dancer as well, because dance is a very nice way of remembering things. Um, but I would use music as well as singing, as it's a language that you, you want to teach, uh, where you use the words and the movements together. Uh, so I think that's the way to do it. I'm sure you're, the dance teacher you know uh, would be able to give you some input for that. But I think on your own you could think of ideas. Um, I, did, I once did a workshop um, where we got some teachers to actually do exactly that. Um, what I did, I, I found a song about the body. And, yeah, and they then made a dance where they sort of dance with parts of the body. And, of course, you're doing languages, so you would bring the language in as well. They actually have to say the parts as well. So, you know, these are sort of ideas we can build on, you know, things like that. Okay. And Joe is um, uh, uh, writing a bit about different yeah. scenarios that they think it's uh, uh, hard to do it by themselves uh, if the kid is older, if I understand. Uh, and it's easier if they're younger. And also with the, when you talked about uh, singing in the English, I think it's a great idea and also tend to, to do it like you know, you learn it theoretically by reading and writing, then you can also sing it. And then even if you do the words with your body, it's like they learn so much better because they use more of their um, uh, their <laughs> different, uh, help me out guys, <laughs> the word for it. Yeah, it, you know, it, it means that they actually bring, um, it, it, when you actually move, uh, and move within a dance, you, you use a different part of your brain to remember. So right. in fact, uh, w what you're doing is, is you're bringing additional aspects into your learning uh, at, at a cognitive level, which helps you actually remember better. Not that I'm a neuroscientist or really know a lot about it, but this is what I've learned. Um, one of the questions I saw just that. above, yeah, is somebody said, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dora yeah. said, I teach in a primary school and I can't manage yeah. the dance. How could I use your project in primary school? It, it, one of the things we've done in this project is we, we've actually got four different art forms. So if you have one area that's a little bit difficult for you, then please do look at the other lesson plans and the other areas that may be a little bit more easy for you to access. You know, it's, it's exactly why we brought in these four different aspects of art. So I think I, hopefully that answers your question, Dora. Okay. But I'm just also going down dance the, uh, is. Can, can I talk? Can you hear me? Please. Uh, also, yeah. dance is also a language, and and when you express something with your body, it is uh, like expressing with your mouth. But you find the, another way to to get a message across or to to just coordinate with your schoolmates. So I think through doing various things with the group, the, the learning uh, reach more out to each and every one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because one method like reading and repeating words or whatever you do with words, 
it, it hits a lot of children, but some other children, they, they are just relieved when they can do something that is not of the kind. Okay. Thank you, Helena. And that's... Um, Joel, yep. go ahead. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, we're coming up to... Right. Um, I actually want to give everybody a bit of a takeaway from this. And um, in the wiki space, you can actually register on the wiki space. Can you, we've got the link showing right now on the screen. Uh, but we've actually got a forum there. And what I'd like to do, if you, if you like, you, you'd have to register on the wiki. Please use a real name. And what I want to do is ask you as teachers, uh, hopefully, this is the job of this webinar, to give you ideas. To take an aspect of your learning, or a particular aspect that you want to teach, and try and perhaps look at our resources, look at what we've spoken about today, and come up with some sort of little idea, and share that with us. Because one of the things we very much want to do with this project is work it into the future, and look at your feedback and your ideas. So, go to the wiki space. Register with a real name. I will give you editing rights. And then in the teacher's forum, which you'll find on the opening page, to write in, this is what I want to teach, and this is my idea. And then we can all comment on those ideas and perhaps add to that, share it, and enhance it as well, as a bit of a takeaway. Um, I've got to, I'm, I'm going to close the meeting yeah. now. Sorry, go on, Matilda. Yeah. Uh, they're asking for the link again. I'm putting it in the chat uh, again. So. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Matilda. That's great. Okay. So um, I'm going to close the meeting. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. I think it's been uh, a very nice session. I've really enjoyed this one. Joel? We lost you. Matilda, can you say goodbye? Perhaps? Yep. Yep. Uh, okay, I was just going to say if you guys could say goodbye, please, if you wish. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Helena. Matilda, oh. you want to say bye? <laughs> You get Joel. Joel. Okay. But now great. you are in again. So, so thank you very much goodbye to everybody for coming, and uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we really look forward to your <laughs> ideas and comments on the wiki space. Goodbye from. Uh, so I'm formally from going to Elena. <laughs> <laughs> you see it. You will is lost.